Hey, hey, welcome back on Sports Bit. Betty and Insight today, Paulie and Teddy, weekend preview edition. Happy Veterans Day out there. Big game breakdown. College basketball underway. Michigan State and Arizona from Hawaii. We'll get to that. And then to the NFL, some good matchups. The Chiefs against the Panthers, Cowboys and the Steelers, the Patriots at home against the Seahawks on Sunday night, and the Falcons and the Eagles plus money time play of the day. Thursday night football, a lot of professional money on the Browns. It looked pretty good in the first half. But then, for whatever reason, Hugh Jackson, with the lead, made a quarterback change. McCown was 6 of 13 with two interceptions. Ravens with the easy win, Teddy. Yeah, I mean, again, if you watch the first half, you can understand why the wise guys loaded up on Cleveland. It wasn't a little bit of money. We're talking about plus 10 down to plus 7.5 for an NFL game. That's a significant line move. Uh, And all of it, you know, quote-unquote sharp money or wise guy money, syndicate money. And I mean, it looked like the Ravens had absolutely no business as 10-point chalk, which they probably don't against most teams. But, of course, if you watch the second half of that game, you understand why uh, all that money on Cleveland lost. Because for as inept as Baltimore was, I mean, the Browns are a pretty inept football team. When you grade out the personnel for Cleveland, they're worse than San Francisco. The attitude for the Browns has been better than the 49ers. But, geez, I mean, that squad, uh, <laughs> when you grade, player for player, there's no team in the NFL with less experienced talent. They'll get there. A lot of young guys on that team that have a chance, but the NFL once again puts on a bad puts out a bad product on a national TV game for Thursday night. Flacco now 15 and two career against the Browns. The Cle- Cleveland defense couldn't get off the field. Third and seven, third and nine, third and ten. They kept moving the chains. Their streak continues. They've allowed at least 24 points in every game this season. Doesn't happen since the mid 60s. They're 0 and 10. Find me the win. And although a good article on ESPN.com Thursday that Hugh Jackson will survive an 0-16 season, this is a huge rebuild, and the players like him. That helps. Well, I mean, the players absolutely buy into what Hugh Jackson is selling, and I think it would be very foolish to make a coaching change again for Cleveland. I mean, they haven't found a coach to do a rebuild with. Hugh Jackson's the guy, and if they stick with him, I expect eventually they'll have success. But when you have a complete roster teardown and rebuild, doesn't happen overnight. You know, it doesn't happen in a year or two. If you're a Browns fan, you will continue to be a quote-unquote long-suffering Browns fan for at least another couple of years. Another bad bet, our play of the day. It was 14 to nothing Carolina early. They lose outright against Duke in the rivalry game. And this is the first win the Dukies had against Carolina when they were ranked since 1958. They had lost nine in a row. They shut down Trubisky in the second half, and he threw a couple interceptions. He did. Uh, and look, I mean, Duke has impressed me with their guile and their guts this year. You know, they were 3-16 and 16 coming into the game, uh, but 6-3 and three against the number. They went into South Bend, and I know Notre Dame hasn't had a good year. But winning outright in South Bend for the less talented football team. The less talented football team won again last night. And now 7-3 and three against the number. David Cutcliffe continues to make money for his supporters, just like he did last year and the year before that. And the year before that, very disappointing loss for the North Carolina Tar Heels. And a pretty good result for the books as North Carolina money came in on game day. Minus 10.5 up to minus 11.5 by kickoff. They handed uh, Virginia Tech to Coastal. They'll play Clemson, barring an epic collapse in the ACC title game. Uh, Late week line moves. Good game. What? What's that? (laughs) I said good game. Oh, yeah. yeah. Late week line moves in the NFL. Uh, Some buyback on Philly here yesterday. Yeah, uh, there was early week money on Atlanta, and now we've seen some buyback on Philly. And let's tease the next segment. Yeah, we'll tell you why in Big Game Breakdown. We talk about the Eagles and the Falcons, but it's easy to understand why there's been some Philadelphia money off that big move towards Atlanta off the opener. This surprised me. Buyback on Denver. You know, no Wolf, no Tlaib. Marshall's banged up. The Raiders ran all over them. Early Saints money uh, earlier in the week. Yeah, and, and then now the buybacks come on Denver. And you're right. No Tlaib, no Derek Wolf, Kayvon Webster, very questionable in this ballgame. T.J. Ward, questionable. Brandon Marshall, questionable. That's five key defensive starters. And even if all three of the questionable guys play, you know, Tlaib and Wolf matter uh, against a uh, Saints uh, offense that's pretty good at moving the ball up and down the field. And obviously, as we saw last week, without those guys, the Raiders had a pretty easy time against what's supposed to be an elite Broncos defense. Buy back on the Vikings, down to two plus two and a half in D.C. Yeah, and earlier in the week, we saw the money come up 
uh, on Washington. Bet it from two and a half up to three. Now, back to two and a half. You want to have some fun? Check out Jay Gruden's record off a bye. I'll give you a hint. With extra time to repair, he's not very good. Money for the Bears. Doug Martin looked pretty good in practice so far, though. Yeah, Martin's back in practice. We don't know yet if he's going to play. Winston and Mike Evans have both been upgraded to probable. But they're missing their starting center, their starting guard, both very questionable. A defensive tackle, Clinton McDonald, a big question mark. And I think that the markets are looking to bet on Chicago off the bye. The Bears are saying the right thing for the back half of the season. But this line is still not up everywhere. I think they're waiting to see for sure what the status is of Martin, Winston, and Evans. But we've seen indicators. This was pick. Now we're seeing lines that are out there in the Bears minus one and a half range. I wouldn't even be surprised to see this one go up a notch or two higher. Monday night football, Cincinnati in New York to take on the Giants. Again, more Bengals money. Yeah, I mean, we reported about Bengals money earlier in the week when we did an early week NFL line moves, and there was another big move on Cincy uh, Thursday. Now we're talking about Pick'em or Cincy minus one, this from an opener of Giants minus three. So been nothing but Bengals money. We saw one big move and then a second one on Cincinnati. Maybe we'll see more between now and Monday night. Yes, up next, big game breakdown. Four key games in the NFL, and college basketball is here. We got a top 10 matchup with Michigan State Top 15 matchup with Michigan State and Arizona coming up on Sportsbit. Betting and insight today on SBRPicks.com. Go to SBRodds.com. Browse, compare, and shop live odds available at top online sportsbooks. Back on Sportsbit, Paulie and Teddy. Betting insight today. Time for a big game breakdown. As always, live odds, sportsbookreview.com. Quickly, college basketball's here. A doubleheader on ESPN from Honolulu. It's Michigan State and Arizona to start number 12 against number 10 in the preseason ranking. Sparty, one and a half, 141 and a half the total early season approach. Be careful. Doubleheader, good place to learn, though. Look, let's start with this, Teddy. Look at the Michigan State schedule. What Izzo's going through to start the first month of the season. I want to start with this, if you will forgive me for just a moment. Early season approach. You said that very clearly. Be careful. You don't have to try to make money every day. What I, I would say I might have, I'm, if I'm lucky, I'll have 10 bets between now and Thanksgiving in college basketball. What I will be doing is watching and learning. And this doubleheader in Hawaii, a great place to watch and learn. Now, you talk about that Sparty schedule. Everyone's accustomed to Tom Izzo coaching hard in every game. And he'll coach hard here. But this is a developmental situation, not a we got to win this game situation. Look at it. They play here. They played November 15th versus Kentucky. At Madison Square Garden. November 23rd through 25th, they have the Battle for Atlantis, all against big name teams. November 29th at Duke. That's a tough schedule for November. And Izzo's goal is not to win all of them, but to use the games to get his team developing towards March. And of course, we're talking about a team that has two likely freshman starters in Josh Lankford and Miles Bridges. Now, Arizona's schedule is much different. Their next three, they have Bakersfield, Sacred Heart, Northern Colorado. So, this is their step-up game for early season play, for what it's worth. Yeah, Cupcake City with that one. 6 o'clock Pacific, the second game of the doubleheader that follows it in ha- on uh, Honolulu. It's number 3, Kansas, against number 11, Indiana. K- Kansas is 6.5, 150 the total. And it's Tom Crean against Bill Self, Teddy. What do you think about this one? Yeah, I mean, there's not much priority for Crean or Self to win the nightcap of this ballgame. It's not a situation where I'm comfortable laying this price with Indiana, but there is a priority for all you guys to watch Josh Jackson while you can. This is an absolute one-and-done player. He's supposed to be pretty special. The Hoosiers are deep, man. They're too deep at every position, but it's going to take time for Crean to find the right fits for Indiana. Yes, live on sportsbookreview.com. NFL now. Falcons hit the road to take on the Eagles. Atlanta 2, 50 the total. Highest scoring offense in the NFL. Led by Matty Ice. 23 touchdowns, 4 interceptions. They are 4-1 and one on the road. They are playing for the 10th straight week. They have the bye coming up after this one, Teddy. They lead the league in yard, on offense. Yards per play, 6.8. And it's a huge gap. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, let's start with the 10th straight week. That's generally a negative scheduling spot. But remember, they didn't play last Sunday. They played last Thursday against Tampa. So they did get a few extra days of rest prior to this week, and they get the week off uh, next week. But we have to talk about this. I mean, Atlanta's a pretty clear MO right now. 
They have an average defense, and they have a great offense. Number one in the NFL at yards per play, 6.8. No other team's above 6.2. But look at this chart right here. 6.8 is off the charts good. In the last six years, nobody's been that high. And in most of those seasons, in fact, only once in the last six seasons, has a team been even within a half yard of what Atlanta has been able to achieve over the first half of the campaign. So we have to expect at least some offensive regression. The defense, 5.6 yards per play allowed. That's number 17 in the NFL. They're an average D. The Eagles, yes, and now 3-0 and at home, though. They played their best football at home, beat the Vikings, blew out the Steelers. Offense, 23rd at 5.3 per yards per play gained. Defense, 11th. What do you think if the Eagles can rebound here? We've talked about it the last two weeks, Teddy. These wide receivers can't get open. Turnovers are happening. And Peterson's not doing a good job with play calling either. Sure. I mean, the Eagles are mediocre. The stats say they're mediocre. They're 4-4. Four and four. They have a mediocre record. They are, as you mentioned, undefeated at home. But something happened last week, and it's not going to jump out in any box score. You know, it, really, you'd have to kind of comb through it. But we talked about Philly not having receivers. And then all of a sudden, they signed this guy, Bryce Treggs. He had two catches for 69 yards in his first game. This was an undrafted rookie free agent. But he's the only wide receiver for Philadelphia that could run a 4-4-40. He can get down the field. The offense got blamed for being conservative early in the season. But now, Wentz has Treggs. Quote, anytime you got a speedster like that, it can change what a defense has to prepare for. So it'll be interesting to see how we can use him going forward. Anytime you got a speedster, it can change the dynamic. And all of a sudden, last week, an Eagles offense that hadn't been able to power the football downfield, all of a sudden you're seeing 30 play, you know, 30 yard gains, 25 yard gains, 35 yard gains again and again. That's a difference maker for Philadelphia. They need some of those big play opportunities. Does the spot scream Philly? It does. I mean, my power rating number favorite Atlanta. And at first glance for this game, I'm like. You gotta be looking at the Falcons here. Less than a field goal. I know they're better than the Eagles, but and this is what the markets were reacting to. We talked about it a little bit earlier. We talked about the NFL late week line movers and the money coming for Philly. It's a miserable spot for the Falcons. They're coming off the big win over Green Bay and then a big divisional win. They have the buy on deck. Natural <sighs> exhale. Meanwhile, Philadelphia is off tough loss, tough loss. They're back home. Four and two a couple weeks ago. Now they're four and four. They're trying to save their season. Only one of these two teams is capable of playing of playing with desperation here, and that team is the home dog. So yeah, I think Atlanta's a better of the two squads, but not this week. Philly or pass for me. Yeah, knockout information there. One more game before the break. Live on sportsbookreview.com. Chiefs and the Panthers. Carolina three, 44 the total. Last year, the Chiefs started one and five, made the playoffs. Carolina trying to do the same thing. They've won two in a row to get to three and five. They're getting their mojo back. They're being more physical, getting a, doing a better job on defense, and Stewart getting the job done too. Yeah, I mean, we, we've seen progress for Carolina. They're not playing as badly as they were, and obviously with Cam Newton healthy, they're not supposed to be playing as badly as they were that night. Uh, those couple of kids where Derek Anderson got involved. But, uh, I mean, Stewart, 59 carries, four rushing touchdowns over the last three games. That centers the offense. The defense has picked it up since the bye. They've gotten 10 sacks over the last two games. But I'm still concerned about their coverage issues with that very young secondary. They've gotten enough push up front the last couple of weeks against lesser competition to overcome that. But Kansas City is not lesser competition. Kansas City has won 17 of 20, very quietly getting the job done. Now, going back to Alex Smith, he's back in for Foles. He's mobile, keep plays alive. Also, look at what he's done to the sack percentage, cut down on sacks in Kansas City. Yeah, he sure has. I, I mean, you, you look at what happened in San Francisco. He was getting sacked almost 10% of the 9% of the time he was getting dropped back at KC the last couple of years in the 7 or 8%. This year, look at that, way down, down to 6% of his dropbacks. So he's getting the ball out quicker. He's able to make plays with his legs. And look, I, I mean, KC was lucky to beat Jacksonville last week. Very lucky. The Jags were the better of the two teams on the field. But... A lot of that had to do with Nick Foles being rusty in the pocket. You know, uh, Andy Reid talking about it. For just stepping into it, I thought there were some good things there, but there were some things he would like to have back. A couple of those sacks he would sure like to have back. Uh, great learning experience for him getting in there and kind of knocking the rust off. Hard to knock the rust off in game eight. Big, 
difference, power rating wise, for me, Kansas City, with Alex Smith, who is the most underrated quarterback in the league, uh, compared to Nick Foles. And at least uh, based on my numbers, that adjustment has not been made as strongly by the markets as it was by myself. He is Charlie Checkdown. He likes to run a lot, and they got a pretty good defense. I like the under in this one. What do you think? No argument there. It's not, you know, uh, Kansas City is not a team that's going to light up the scoreboard on your average Sunday. Yes. Next up, hey, Cowboys and the Steelers and Sunday night, the Seahawks and the Patriots. How about that? Plus the play of the day on Sports Fit. Coming up next, betting inside today with Paulie and Teddy. Do your research before you bet. Check out our ratings guide to see which books have the best ratings and sign-up bonuses. Open up several accounts. Shop for lines at sbrodds.com. Always be ahead of the game. Back on Sports Pit, Paulie and Teddy. Big game breakdown continues. Live odds, sportsbookreview.com. The Cowboys hit the road to take on the Steelers. Pittsburgh two and a half, 50 the total. A couple weeks ago, this was a heavyweight matchup. But the Steelers aren't living up to their part. But the injuries, my God, they're the only team in the NFL to lose at least one start at all units. Quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, O-line, defensive line, linebacker, and DB. And then Pouncey left the game last week, too, and that hurt him. They felt that. Oh, they sure did. Uh, although he had surgery on his dislocated thumb, he's expected to play <laughs> this week and bring that offensive line back fully healthy. And you say that this was a heavyweight matchup a couple of years ago. Heck, this was a heavyweight matchup a couple of decades ago. You know, the NFL this week, at least, despite the miserable product they put out on Thursday night, they have to like some of the stuff they're putting out for Sunday with Cowboys, Steelers, uh, and Seahawks, Patriots. Two really good games and two, you know, one new rivalry, one old rivalry. Now, look, Big Ben came back too early. Uh, and the offense had that awful first half. Really, the awful first three quarters against the Ravens. They have two first downs through three quarters, but he also had a big fourth quarter and when the rhythm finally set in. Here's his quote from Ben Roethlisberger. Quote, guys who've been here know that this is no time, no reason to panic. I'm not thinking about the good, not thinking about the bad or anything on the first half of the season. We're strictly moving forward, and we need to be the best football team that we can be. Everything we've done so far is behind us. Good bad, and indifferent. Not a bad way for a handicapper to think either, Polly, but in this instance for the Steelers, they're a lot better than their 4-4 four four record would indicate, especially now that they've gotten healthy just about all over on the roster. Yes, Cowboys taking care of business. They've won seven in a row. You can only play who's on their schedule, but if the season ended today, they only have one game against a playoff team, and that's the game they lost. They haven't trailed on the road since week four against San Francisco, and Prescott getting it done Romo, unlikely to be active for this one. Jerry Jones, the coaching staff, when are they going to make an announcement and just say Dak is our guy? This can't help this kid that he's a young rookie, won seven in a row. He's still looking over his shoulder. Dak's quote, nothing changes for me. I'm the same guy no matter from now to the point I was the third string guy coming into OTAs. Nothing changes. Nothing going to be different from the way I approach the game. So he was asked, have you done enough to be the full-time starter? Quote, I don't really think about if I've done enough or what I've done. I just think about coming in each and every day and working my butt off in practice, giving this team a chance throughout the week so we can go out there and have a chance to win on Sunday. I mean, you wonder if the, the biggest issue is just the media is forcing them to talk about it in the first place. Right, right. That can't help. Right. And the question, of course, comes, Dallas has been riding Prescott and winning. What happens if they lose a game? What I mean, this team hasn't trailed on the road since week four, you know, uh, and that was at San Francisco. Uh, so it's a situation for the Cowboys where Prescott hasn't been in a lot of – hasn't faced a ton of adversity yet. And I'm fascinated to see what happens if Dak Prescott's down two touchdowns on the road at Pittsburgh and struggling a little bit. Do all of a sudden the Cowboys start to think – about their old starting quarterback, who's obviously getting much healthier and back at practice. Yeah, I give him full marks. It has to bother him. I mean, he's got to be thinking, what do I have to do to be named the starter the rest of the season? we got a two-game lead for the one seed in the NFC. I'm playing great. Yeah, but as soon as you get named the starter for the rest of the season, the next week you get hurt. Happens every year. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> sun, yeah, Sunday night football, great matchup. Seahawks and the Patriots, bad spot for Seattle off the short week and the emotional win Monday night against the Bills. Pats are 7.5, 48.5 the total. Patriots also off the bye. That helps. More time for Brady. He 
He's got his two big tight ends, and look at this. Look who came back and was lighting up in practice. Deion Lewis, another weapon for Tommy. Yeah, but I mean, when it comes to freshness, this game is about as big a disparity as you're going to find in the NFL. We have the Patriots coming off a bye week. Okay, Patri- uh, Tom Brady hasn't thrown an interception since his return. He's thrown 12 touchdowns, 134 attempts. Uh, the Pats are uh, three away uh, from an all-time uh, team record uh, with uh, 252 passes without an interception. He's got a, uh, Brady's got a QB rating of 133.9. The, all, the all-time single-season rest in his record, 122.5 from Aaron Rodgers in 2011. So at some point, there has to be some regression from Tom Brady. Or does there? Because, you know, it's not just Gronk and Bennett. You know, uh, those two clear out the defense for James White. Now you bring Deion Lewis into the mix. And they're coming off a week in which they got to work on everything. The Seahawks are on the way other end of the spectrum when it comes to freshness. I mean, it's not even close when you look at what's happened for Seattle in their last three ballgames. We're talking about a team that's tired and facing a short week and travel. Yeah, look at this graphic. The plays and the minutes. Cardinals, on defense on the field, 90 plays, 46 minutes. Saints, 72 plays, 36 minutes. The Bills, 82 and 40 minutes. A total of 244 plays, 122 minutes. The average is 193 and 90 minutes. That's the equivalent of 17 more plays per game, which is over two full possessions. Yeah, and there's a matchup problem here as well. I mean, they get an edge when Richard Sherman is able to shut down a number one receiver. But Sherman is kind of wasted here because the Pats don't have a number one. They've got two tight ends who have to be double covered over the middle. Uh, So while Sherman is such an effective defender and shutting down the elite wide receivers, I wouldn't be surprised at all if the New England game plan take him out of the equation, which is really, I mean, that's something that only Bill Belichick and company can find ways to do. Although, it is worth noting, Russell Wilson, he's getting healthier. Last week, he threw the ball really well. He ran the ball a little bit for the first time. And if, if he can add that run dimension and create balance on offense, which is getting nothing for the running backs right now, there's a chance here that Seahawks may be able to trade some points with that potent New England offense. Though Belichick, uh, sorry, Belichick off a bye, pretty strong track, I believe 12-4 and four, uh, ATS. And frankly, if you look at his record in all games with extra time to repair, you're not allowed to bet Seattle in this one. <laughs> Don't want to be one-dimensional against the hoodie. He will wear you out. A money time. Play of the day. Loser with Carolina. Let me update this. 23-9 and run. 29-13-1 and on the football season. We're going back to the NFL. Betting number 272. The Steelers. Minus two and a half. They are now in second place with the Ravens win Thursday night. They got to get organized quick and turn this around. We mentioned the Cowboys schedule and the winning, but look who they played. Steelers, Ben Big Ben came back too soon. We think we'll be in tip-top shape and ready to go in this one as they'll get the win against the Cowboys in a game they have to have. They lose this one. My God, they're in a world of hurt. Steelers, minus two and a half, betting number 272, the play of the day. Don't forget uh, Thursday we gave out Washington in the game Saturday against USC. That's it. We're back Monday to recap everything. College and the NFL. We'll talk to you then. Have a good weekend. Be safe. And thanks for watching Sports Bit. Betting Insight today on SBRPicks.com.